Okay, guys, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Germany in World War II to kind of get more of an idea of what Joseph was facing being Jewish in Germany. So after, well, during World War I, um, Germany really got blamed for the war because they were the ones who kept pushing Aus Austria-Hungary, who actually started the war, uh, to keep fighting for four years. So after the war was over, um, everybody basically said, Germany, you're at fault for this war. And so the Treaty of Versailles, which actually ended World War I, um, blamed the Germans and made them pay so much that it actually ruined the German economy, uh, making it really hard for just the average everyday person to get by. Food was really scarce. Money was really scarce. Um, so people were really struggling. Not to mention the German people were just really upset that they had lost the war. Um, hyperinflation. So you guys, I'm sure have heard of inflation. That's when money is worth less. Well, hyperinflation is when your money is worthless. Um, so German money was so worthless after the war. 42 billion German marks, which is basically like the German dollar. Um, 42 billion German marks were worth one American cent. So like $42 billion was worth a penny. So yeah, hyperinflation. You can kind of see in this picture right here, there are some kids playing with money. Um, so being German was not great after World War I. And so Hitler really capitalized that. A lot of people were blaming um, Jewish people after um, World War I. Jewish people um, were already kind of seen as other. It's not, it wasn't a new thing to not like Jewish people. This is called anti-Semitism. It's not a new thing at this point in history. Um, so Hitler kind of capitalized on that and really turned people against Jewish people and um, used their hatred of the Jews to really rise to power. And he had been in the army and got some public speaking training in the army. And that was one of the reasons why so many people were drawn to him and followed him. He really helped um, get Germany out of this awful place. Um, unfortunately, he used this public speaking and his ability of great leadership for horrible, horrible things. Um, so one of the things that Hitler is known for is his belief in this Aryan race. Um, the Aryan race really, um, it's a concept that has also been around for a while. Um, it's just the concept of a master race, that there's one race that's better than all the others. And obviously this is not a true thing. Um, this is often used um, even today. Um, by people who are racist trying to justify their racist ideologies. Um, so how Germans did this was they just tried to say that anybody who was German was better than anyone else. Um, mostly this was Jews, but they also did this to the Roma and Sinti people um, and black people. So those, um, they also... Um, said that homosexuals, so gay people, uh, were not part of the master race. So they were also killed in the Holocaust. To prove your Aryan status, it was actually really difficult. You had to get genealogies. Uh, you had to have birth and de death records. Um, so it was actually really difficult. You can see here, there's a German teacher singling out a child with Aryan features. He's kind of like showing all the other kids like, oh, look, this is what you want to be like to be Aryan, to be truly German. Um, so it's definitely really creepy to look at now from an outside perspective. Um, so a lot of people have asked, like, why did Hitler do it? No one really knows. Um, People have speculated on this forever because it is a really interesting question, like what made him um, start the Holocaust? Um, so like I said, Hitler did not invent hating the Jews. Jews have um, faced discrimination and persecution for a really long time because of their religion. Um, 
In Hitler's biography, he said that his development into an anti-Semite, um, being an anti-Semite means someone who hates Jewish people. Something anti-Semitic is something against Jewish people. Um, so he said he became an anti-Semite as the result of a long personal struggle. So that's really unclear. Um, but everybody has kind of said that this might just be a cover-up, um, that he might have just used um, um, anti-Semitism to kind of get into power because it was convenient. So it's not really uh, clear. There is one woman um, who knew him when he was young, and she said that he always complained about what was going on in Austria um, because Hitler is from Austria. And she said, above all, he said that he did not want to serve in the military in Austria because Austria was too swamped with Jews. Uh, Verjudit, that's the Austrian word for it, I'm guessing, or the German word. That was one of the recurring themes that he said that Vienna and Austria were so Verjudit that he had left the country and was unwilling to fight in the war for Austria. That would be World War I is what she's talking about. Hitler ultimately was able to sign up to fight for Germany, even though he was not German born. Um, so it's really interesting to me that Hitler has all this German pride um, and he's doing all of these things for Germany, but he actually is not from Germany. Um, then two Austrian politicians greatly influenced Hitler's thinking. Um, George Ritter von Schroner, a German nationalist, he um, said that the German-speaking regions of Austria-Hungary should be added to the German empires, but he did say that Jews could never be fully-fledged German citizens. Um, so Hitler really was influenced by him. And then Viennese mayor Karl Luger, um, and then Hitler saw from him that anti-Semitism and social reforms could be successful from him. Um, and in his autobiography, Hitler really said that he drew inspiration from the greatest German mayor of all times and put similar ideas into place in 1933 when he came into power. Um, so we can see that Hitler really got his ideas from other people. Um, here are some anti-Semitic propaganda put out by the Nazi party. So you can see it says Der Jude right there. Um, and then the caption on there reads, Behind the Enemy Powers, the Jew. Um, and that was around 1942. So they were putting out these um, kind of comics so that people would really turn against Jewish people. Um, this is a film. This is a poster for a film um, that was also uh, The Eternal Jew, which is also an anti-Semitic film that people could go see. Um, I thought this timeline was kind of interesting. I won't go through all these because there's a lot, um, but these were some of the things that um, led up to um, Jewish people being rounded up and taken away. So 1933 is when Hitler came into power. Um, so these are some of the things that were taken away from Jewish people leading up to World War I. Um, so there were random attacks on Jews and Jewish property. Jewish students start being excluded from exams in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, and law. They can't join the military. Um, now they're no longer allowed to vote. They can't go to parks, restaurants, swimming pools. They can't say the Hal Hitler greeting anymore. Um, they can't use electrical, optical equipment, um, bicycles, typewriters, or records. They have to carry their passports all the time, or they, sorry, they can't have passports. They can't travel abroad. Um, they were taken out of colleges. They can't go to the movies, theater, concerts, beaches, holiday resorts. Um, there was a night where many, um, synagogues, shops, uh, were just destroyed. Um, Jewish people were murdered, um, and there was just a lot of violence against Jewish people that night. Jewish people expelled from German schools. Jewish passports have to have a lead, red letter on, red letter J on them. 
Um, they have a Jewish immigration office. Jewish people are being evicted from their homes. Um, their telephones are confiscated. They're no longer getting ration cards. They have um, a yellow star of, they have to wear a yellow star of David with Jew written on it. They can't have cats or dogs or birds. They can't leave the country. They have to give up, up their coats. They can't have eggs or milk. They can't have um, blind or deaf Jews, can't have armbands telling people that. And then all schools are closed to German children. Um, and then after that, I believe, is when they really started rounding up Jewish people and taking them to concentration camps. Um, and then a lot of people asked about the deaths in World War I. This is um, one of the most, uh, one of the times mo the most people have died in the entire history of the world. Um, so 50 to 80 million people died in this world, in this war, um, with a lot of that being soldiers, obviously, because there were so many countries involved in this war. And then um, a lot of people died in the Holocaust, and it was not just um, Jewish people. There was also um, a another kind of Holocaust going on in Russia as well, the Soviet Union. Um, and then there were also the Roma people being killed and gay people were also being killed um, in the Holocaust. Um, so that's a little bit more about what it was like to live in Germany in World War II, especially if you were um, Jewish.